On behalf of Ronstadt, I am delighted to invite you here this morning to greet you here for our first Women Powering Business Forum here in the U.S. If you have a passion for something, it's much easier to be successful. Those businesses that have women on the board are outperformed on the bottom line. Women and women bring different qualities to leadership, and that's why a blend is best. I'm pulling support from, and I'm not going to trade on it. So I think women are often faced with choices um, that are really impossible choices, and that's our truth. So, um, to kick things off, to get the party started, as they say, I'd like to introduce Susie Wolf. So I first met Susie um, in Toronto, um, and Susie is a uh, test driver on our Formula One team, so I say our. <laughs> We're probably a small sponsor uh, of, of, the, the Royal Wii, of the Williams Formula One team. And Stacy, you know, can talk to us a lot about what it's like to be a woman making her way in a field that's not exactly awash with females, as you probably know. Um, so, and Stacy started her career in karting. Is that right, Stacey? So between 1996 and 1999, she was Brit the, uh, Britain's top woman carter, so the British woman carter of the year for four years, and then was the top female carter in the world in the year 2000. So, yeah. <laughs> Stacey is only one of four women this decade that have worked in Formula One, that have driven in Formula One. And here's an interesting fact. From 1950 to today, in the last 60 years, only five women have participated in the Grand Prix race. So, you know, for those of us who, who think, gosh, you know, women are really underrepresented in what we do, I think, I think you win. Susie will uh, teach us a thing or two. Before I invite Stu Stacey to the stage, and we're going to talk today a lot about uh, overcoming obstacles, uh, Susie faced an interesting obstacle yesterday as she um, came to the U.S. for the first time. Um, they lost her luggage. Oh. So, despite her celebrity, Susie doesn't usually travel incognito. She usually has her full F1 garb, uh, but uh, today um, it's in Pennsylvania. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. All right, so Susie. Thank you. Thank you. So Susie, the last time we met, I'd never been to a Formula One race. I was a little embarrassed to tell Susie that. I was one of the sponsors of the team. <coughs> but I've now gone. So I, I went to the Formula One race in Tokyo. Just about regained my hearing. So if you need me to speak up, let me know. Because I, that must be, talk about workers' comp. That must be, <laughs> must be quite a challenge. Anyway, I was very impressed. You know, talk to us a little bit. What is it like to be a, a driver on the, on the Williams team? First of all, thank you very much all for, for coming today. Like Linda said, my luggage did get lost. I normally do look a little bit more like a racing driver, um, so please excuse that. But it's really great to be here uh, in Atlanta. It's my first time in Atlanta. And, and like Linda said, we had some great events in Canada around the Montreal weekend. And, and I, I love the events. For me, being in quite a male-dominated world, to be surrounded by so many successful women, it was really something inspirational for me as well. So it's, it's great to be here this morning and see so many of you uh, here with me. And I'm very lucky that I'm doing a job that I love, uh, a job that I dreamed of since I was a very uh, little girl. It all started uh, when I started racing cards. And, and like Linda said, I progressed through the ranks. And, and when I look back now and, and when people say to me, well, why, why did you want to be a racing driver? It was simply my passion. It was something I loved doing. I was incredibly lucky to get the support of my parents. My father has a, a motorbike shop, and actually my mother met my father when she went into the shop to buy her first bike. So um, the start, the, the genes were there. Motorsport was in the blood, uh, so that was a, a good start. But I got a lot of support from, from my parents. Um, but my, for my mom, it was always important that, that I studied and that school work went very well. So I did end up going to university to study, I think, international business, the, the standard course you do when you're not quite sure what you want to do. <laughs> um, and after, after two years, um, I decided that I wanted to pursue my dream of being a racing driver. So I made the difficult decision to, to quit my studies 
my mum immediately said, OK, but you can always go back and finish. And I said, yeah, mum, I'm going to go back and finish it in a few years, knowing that there was no way I was going back. Um, but I took the chance. Uh, there were some tough moments along the way, um, but I ended up becoming a Mercedes-Benz works driver in, the, in a touring car championship. And I was there seven years. And that then led me to being picked up by the Williams Formula One team. And I'm incredibly proud to be part of a team like Williams. They are a real racing racers team. Everything is about the performance of the car. And I think a lot of you are, are maybe not so aware of Formula One just now in the US. We hope that's going to change yeah. after after this morning. Uh, yeah, yeah, after this morning, definitely, and after the race in Austin, especially. Um, but Formula One is, is in worldwide, maybe not so much in the US, one of the, or is the top uh, motorsport category in the world. It's groundbreaking. Whatever they develop in Formula One quite often gets put into road cars in four or five years' time. Um, and being part of the team was a dream come true for me. I'm getting to work with some of the best engineers in the world, uh, 500 employees in the factory, all focusing on building two of the fastest racing cars they can. Um, so it's quite inspirational to be part of that and to be the racing driver that gets to get in the car, um, drive it as fast as I can, and give the team feedback. Um, so for me, it was a, was a dream come true, and I'm relishing every moment in the team. And who do you look to for inspiration, Susie? There are, there are so few women in your field. Who do you look to as a role model? Who do you derive inspiration from? It's a question I get asked a lot, and it's a difficult one for me to answer, because most certainly when I was growing up, there was never a female that I could aspire to, because there was never a female that had achieved what I wanted to achieve. But when I look back on it now, I think my, my biggest inspiration at the time was actually the women in my family, my mother and my grandmother, because they instilled in me the belief as a young girl that I could do whatever I put my mind to. Um, obviously, as a, as a young 8-year-old or 12-year-old or 14-year-old, there was hardly any other girls my age uh, racing in, in, in carts. But my mother never made me feel like I was doing something different. She never pointed out that, well, take care, you're only a little girl, and, and, and you know, don't crash. Or she never, ever gave me the feeling that I was doing anything different. So for me, I was just doing something that I loved doing. Um, and I had a very uh, big help in the fact that my older brother was also racing. And I was one of those girls that said, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Um, and many people assume when I, when I first jumped in a cart that I was super quick and, and blew all the boys away. But actually, the truth is, is quite somewhat different. The first ever time I drove a cart, we went as a family to the cart track. I did a couple of laps. I got pushed around out on the track. They were all coming past me much quicker. I said, whoa. That happens I don't to like me this. every morning. <laughs> I can understand what that's like. Um, and I came into the pits and I said to my dad, bah, I don't like that. That's really, I was getting hit. They were much faster. And he said, Toots, that was always his nickname for me, Toots. We have two options now. We put the cart back in the truck and we go home. It's no problem. Or you go back out there, you try and go faster, and when they hit you, you're going to hit them back twice as hard. <laughs> I think you can guess which option I went for. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, going back to your question, I think there was no clear role model for me, but in some sense, my mother and, and my grandmother, who's always a very, who was also a very strong lady, they kind of gave me that feeling that you can achieve whatever you put your mind to, no matter if it's male-dominated world or not, just do what, what makes you happy. And Susie, do you think that, that you are um, bringing a, you know, a whole new fan base to F1? Have you, have you noticed g girls, younger girls, showing an interest in what you're doing? And Without a doubt. And for me, I've, I've always said, when everybody says to me, you know, you're, breaking, you're blazing the trail and you're breaking down the barriers, I keep saying, no, wait, I've, I've got so much more I want to achieve before I can say I've, I've broken down barriers. But for me, it's, it's so good to see when a little girl comes to me to, to put a, another aspect to the story. The racing car I drive in, in DTM is pink. <laughs> um, the sponsor, it was always white, and the sponsor had the great idea that we want the car to be pink because it's a great marketing tool. Um, I wasn't that happy about the decision, but kind of got over it. But one very positive side effect was these little girls dressed head to toe in pink coming to me and saying, are you the girl in the pink car? <laughs> um, and I would always say, yeah, I'm the girl in the pink car. And I got quite proud of it, actually. And, and many fathers came to me and said, 
you know, they would watch the racing on the television and their daughters were never interested until they could see a pink car <laughs> out on the track. And I think they think it's either Barbie or Hello Kitty. Um, <laughs> but that was a, a very positive side effect. And, and that really made me feel quite proud that, that this small thing of turning the car pink, no matter if it was a, a cliche blonde girl in a pink car, it really inspired many young little girls who would never normally be interested in racing or even coming to a race. So that was a very positive side effect. And, and in that sense, I do feel now that, that maybe it's good just to show um, women or girls who maybe didn't quite think that motorsport was their thing, that actually there are women there who are doing something good in motorsport. And, and as a team at Williams, I'm the development driver, the only driver uh, in Formula One now. On the board, we have a, a CFO who's female. We have Claire Williams, the daughter of the founder, who sits on the board. She's head of marketing. And motorsport is a very performance-based sport. If you're not good enough, you simply won't last because there's too many people aspiring to get there, and it's too fast-paced and performance-based that if you're not good enough, you simply will get replaced. So the fact that you can turn on the TV screen and, and see more women at the highest level yep. of motorsport, I think inspires women to kind of think, okay, it's possible. Great. And Susie, what advice do you have to women, to the women here in the room who are perhaps making their way um, up, the, up the leadership chain or, or trying to kind of take their place in a, at a table where there are a lot more men than women around the table? What would be your advice? Well, we actually saw from the, from the events we did in Canada that as much as mine is a, a sports um, male-dominated world, it's very similar to what you're also facing in, in your workplaces. And I think, first of all, you're all here, so you all have a, a level of success already, so I think you're doing a good job as it is. But my advice was always, or if I look back and, and try and understand how I managed to get to, to where I wanted to go, it's a couple of factors. The first thing is, is being passionate about what you do. I'm very lucky, but I followed my passion and I'm doing my dream job. But I think if you have a passion for something, it's much easier to be successful because you can dedicate much more to it. You can get up in the morning and know you're doing something you love. It's not about going to an office and thinking, oh, God, another day at work. Um, so the passion really helps. And, and the second thing is, is just believing in yourself. There was many times when, when people said, you're never going to make it. There was many moments in my career where I thought to myself, how am I going to make it? There's so much odds against me making it. Two moments stand out when I was nominated for Young Driver of the Year Award, a very big award in Europe, and I lost two years in a row. And I spent the, when it was announced, I spent those nights crying in my hotel room. But when I look back now, actually, the guys who won the awards are not racing anymore. <laughs> so maybe ah. it was good that I didn't win. <laughs> um, but there are always going to be very, very tough moments. And there are always going to be moments where you think to yourself, ah, it's just, it's, am I doing the right thing? Is it, it's just believe in yourself. Know from that gut feeling inside that you're on the right path. You're doing something that you want to do. And no matter how tough it gets, just never lose that, that belief in yourself. That's terrific. Susie, thank you so much for sharing your story. And I wish you and your team good luck in Austin this weekend. Thank you very All much. All right. Keep your fingers crossed, please. <laughs>